I have the book. Son, I have the book. Okay. Yeah, okay. This is an extra copy. Thank you very much. Would you like it in a flask or? No, no, this is good enough. Thank you. The idea is like this, the karma, the ritual, has a unique power. It can accomplish many things, like with the help of a ritual you can gain heaven. Gaining heaven is not an ordinary thing, so a ritual helps you to gain the heaven. And then even in this world, Rituals help us to gain many, many things. Therefore, when the ritual is found to be so powerful in many, many ways, there must be some ritual or a combination of rituals which should help us to gain moksha, ridiparopaksha. Okay? And the answer is no. We are not saying anything against rituals. They give what they give. But they cannot give moksha. You know why? Because the uh, the bondage, it is clearly understood that the bondage is due to ignorance. Now, this is a see, important point which you have to understand. And uh, this understanding will have important implications also. So, you see, you are bound. Uh, how, what is the bondage as I have described adequately? The bondage is in the form of sorrow and fear. That is the bondage. That is the essence of bondage. So, and therefore, there is sorrow due to ignorance. Very interesting. You see, due to ignorance, avidya. So, this, this ignorance, this has to be carefully distinguished from the routine ignorance that we have. 
For example, I am I are, you ask me, hey, Swami, do you know Russian language? I will say, no, no, I am I'm ignorant of Russian language. So it is not that kind of ignorance it is. That kind of a topical ignorance, we know a few things and we do not know many, many things. It is not that kind of ignorance. This is the fundamental ignorance. So we have a, a nice expression in, in Sanskrit, avidya. We call it ajnanam, but uh, more importantly we call it avidya. Like for example, do you know Sanskrit? No, I don't know. That is called ajnana. Okay? This is also called ajnana. So ajnana is a broader word. That is avidya is exclusively meant for this. Do you know your true self? I don't know. That is avidya. Therefore, lack of the wisdom or understanding of the real self, that is avidya. That avidya is the cause of bondage. Now, when avidya is the cause of the bondage, there are two things you have to understand. One, karma cannot get rid of that avidya. There is a thing called kanthagata chamikara nyaya. That becomes very important here. So, I will make it into an anecdote. I create anecdotes, you know. It is not that all these anecdotes are ready-made. I create, I make, I spill them all. So there was a queen. She has a, a diamond necklace, very valuable necklace. And she lost it. Yes, she lost it. And naturally, she is very much distressed because um, diamond necklace is very valuable and she, she knows its value and she also knows that it, uh, that it uh, adds to her own beauty. So that, that is what a necklace is, you know. Suppose uh, you are sure that you are beautiful without the necklace, then what is the value of the necklace? Right? <laughs> there is no value for the necklace. Really? So you have to believe very strongly that this blessed thing called a necklace, which is a, an unnecessary contraption around the neck in my opinion. <laughs> so, what you sincerely believe that it will add to your beauty. Then only the necklace has value. And then it is valuable in the marketplace also. It is a costly metal and diamond and all that. And so she is distressed that she lost the necklace. And then she is searching. And then she has put some maid, maids. She has a few maids under her command. They are, she, she tells them, come on, you search for my necklace. I misplaced it somewhere. I lost it. They were all searching desperately. Then uh, the, it was now uh, an event in the palace. Uh, uh, important problem in the palace. Therefore, message was sent to the minister. The minister ran to the palace. He is a wise man. Minister is supposed to be a wise man. And he went to the palace. And uh, there, there was so much uh, um, noise and going on in the palace and everybody is busy searching for things. Um, so, put, putting things upside down and all that. He asked, what is the matter? She said, I lost my necklace, you know. Oh, you lost your necklace? Then wh what are all these maids doing? They are searching for the necklace. Then he says, stop searching. And so they all stop. Then he says to the queen, you stop searching. Then she asks, what are you talking? When we lost the necklace, we have to search for it, you know. Without searching, how will, you get it? How, how will I get it? I assure you, you will get it. How? Without searching. Yes, without searching, you will get it. Got the point? Are you understanding the story? It is an important story. Don't think that some silly story. She, she contests, come on, what are you talking? When you lose an object, you have to search for it, then only you will get it. No, madam, I assure you, you believe in me, you will get it. Stop searching. So, stopping the search is a precondition. 
then you take your hand, okay? Put it like this, okay? Take it closer to your body. The hand is everywhere, underneath the drawers, underneath the sofas. Take out the hand from all those external places, okay? Then uh, look at the hand, then take the hand towards your neck. Come on, I have to search for the necklace. Don't worry, do it what I say. She says, I got it. The necklace is sitting there. Therefore, gaining the necklace is the most important goal, and losing the necklace is a big cause of uh, distress, cause of big distress. And uh, the, the distance, the difference between these two is only the difference between avidya and vidya. Okay? She lost the necklace due to ignorance and she gained the necklace by knowledge. Okay? Now you have to understand this point. So, now I will add a few things. Whatever you lose, whatever you Whatever uh, distress you suffer because of ignorance is uh, really no distress at all. If it is a real distress, knowledge we cannot remove it. Only if it is imagined distress, means the distress caused by ignorance, then and then only knowledge can eliminate the distress. Therefore, knowledge is uh, the most powerful and also the most useless at the same time. How? When you have to gain something which you do not have, then knowledge is almost worthless. Karma alone will help you to gain what you don't have. Whereas, what you have to gain is already with you, or what you have to become is already your true self, then Karma is worthless. Karma cannot help you. Only knowledge can help you. Okay? Would you get that point? Therefore, you have to first clearly see, I, I spent a lot of time yesterday on this topic, you have to clearly see that, number one, you acknowledge that you are in bondage. You have to acknowledge. Without acknowledging, you cannot come out of bondage. You acknowledge that you are in bondage. No, no, we are not in bondage, we are in Canada, in Toronto, we are doing great. Mm -hmm. Then uh, there is no further uh, discussion anymore. So you acknowledge that you are in bondage. You have sorrow, defined and undefined, both. And you have fears, defined and undefined. So this is bondage. And so you acknowledge, number one. Number two, understand clearly that this bondage is not caused by the host of factors that I have listed yesterday it is not caused by any one of them. This bondage is entirely caused by ignorance. That means what? You are unhappy because of ignorance and you are afraid because of ignorance. That means there is no cause for you to be unhappy, to be sorrowful. There is no real cause to be sorrowful for no reason. For no valid reason, you are unhappy. Katasun, agatasun, ushcha, nanu shochanti panditaha. The knowledgeable people, the wise people, they don't, uh, they don't grieve over the one who is uh, no more and also over the one who is uh, around. Whereas we, we grieve over the people who are around us and we grieve over the people who have left this world. That means what? We are afraid of death and we are equally afraid of life. We grieve over death and we grieve over living also. That is the difference between a jnani and an ajnani. A jnani is afraid of life and he is afraid of death, whereas a jnani is neither afraid of life nor of Death. That is the difference. That is the very first verse of Gita. Therefore, the difference between bondage and liberation is the difference between ignorance and knowledge. Karma 
is good. We don't have anything against karma. Suppose you want a coke. You want to drink a coke. Then you have to go somewhere outside, pay some money and get it and drink it. Whereas if you want to be happy, you need not go anywhere. You need not wait for happiness or something to happen. You need not do anything. You just look at yourself and realize that you are happiness embodied. To become happy, to be happy, you need not do anything. To get a coke, you have to do something. It is like that. Because you need not become happy. You know why? Because you are happiness embodied. I don't know that. Yes, you don't know that. You have to know that. That is the Kanthagata Chamekara. The happiness, for happiness sake, you don't go, go anywhere else. You don't try anything. In fact, uh, you look at that story. The more she searches for the necklace, the more she will be distressed. You know that? Similarly, the more you search for happiness in the in the quicksand of this world, the more distressed you will be. You take my advice, this evening, a calm and quiet evening, you take my advice, stop searching for happiness. Don't do anything to acquire happiness. Really, I am not, uh, I am uh, saying it seriously. Stop all efforts to become happy. You will not know what is unhappiness, what is misery. You will remain in constant peace and happiness. It is our search for happiness that makes our lives miserable. Therefore, it is not about performing some ritual and gaining some karma phala. It is not about that. It is about knowing one's own true nature, now and here. You see, you wake up in the night, early morning, 4.35. The first thing you want to have is a cup of tea, you know. Nice, it, is, it will be very nice to have a cup of tea at that time. So, what do you do? The first thing you do, you see, you want a cup of tea. What is it that you do? You put the light on and then do whatever needs to be done for making a cup of tea. Or, because it is that cup of tea that you want, not this light, therefore you don't put the light on. And start making a cup of tea. You will be able to do. You will be able to make some tea without putting the light on. Because some kind of dispersal light is around and the place is well known to you. You are very familiar with the surroundings. So you will be uh, looking at things by touch and then find out the place and manage to put the heater on and boil water and manage to pick up a tea bag and somehow manage to make a cup of tea and drink it. Right? But in the process, you may step over something and fall on your face, or you may hit the head to a wall. All these things can happen. So the wise thing is, put the light on. Putting the light on will not may provide you a cup of tea. That won't make you a cup of tea. But still, put the light on and then do what you need to do. Therefore, similarly, you know your self, true self, and then do whatever ritual you have to do. Once you know the true self, and you find the need to perform a ritual, you do it. Suppose you don't find the need, you don't do it. For example, I don't perform any ritual uh, to prolong my lifespan. I don't perform. You know why? Because for two reasons. One, I don't want to live longer than what Bhagavan makes me live. I don't want. Very clear. Two, I don't think I am going to die. You know why? Because I was never born. It's 
సో వెరీ తెలియచు అంటున్నావు అయ్యో అని గురించి ఓకే దెన్ ఐ మేక్ సమ్ ఎఫర్ట్ టు పర్చేజ్ ఇట్ ఎక్కడ టు గో బ్యాక్ టు ఇండియా ఐ డూ దట్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ ఐ డూ దట్ ఐ హ్యావ్ టు గో బ్యాక్ టు ఇండియా హ్యావ్ అండ్ వెల్ ఐ హ్యావ్ టు గో బ్యాక్ సో వీ ఆర్ హియర్ రెఫర్ టు అవర్ హార్ట్ ఇస్ ఇన్ ఇండియా ఐ టెల్ యూ టు సో దేర్ ఫోర్ సో వాట్ నీడ్స్ టు బి డన్ ఐ ద సన్ ఈస్ రైజింగ్ ఐ లవ్ దట్ దట్ పర్టికులర్ స్మాల్ రిచువల్ ఐ ఐ పర్టికులర్లీ లవ్ ఇట్ i don't need to go to any temple or any such thing because there is the temple the temple nature is the temple the sun is rising i stand before the rising sun surya namaskar i do for 3 4 minutes my day's ritual is successfully completed and what if i have to perform a ritual i perform if i don't need a particular ritual i don't need it for example lakshmi puja i don't need it because whatever lakshmi i have whatever wealth i have that is more than enough for me therefore i don't need to accumulate some more in fact we have already accumulated more than required there there is an urgent need to give up some of it or most of it in our insecurity we go on accumulating things and wealth and uh, i am not exaggerating when i say i am not exaggerating when i say that the wealth that we accumulate becomes a noose around our neck i am not exaggerating it may sound as an exaggeration you think about it anyway the point here is timira sangha there is darkness all around you so what you need at once is tejaha the light that is all you need you cannot suppose you take a lathi and beat the darkness and beat it out of your room can you do that with a lathi you cannot get get out the darkness or you perform a ritual and get rid of darkness you perform a ritual in fact to perform a ritual you need light and suppose you have a mantra a great mantra will that help you to get rid of darkness no it is not a matter for ritual and it is not a matter for upasana mantra is upasana it is a matter for lighting a lamp that is it similarly shri krishna says in gita jnana deepena bhaswata you light the lamp of wisdom in your heart you know heart is the temple the temple it stands for the inner temple which is the heart and in the temple inside the sanctum sanctorum uh, the inside the shrine there is a lamp and that lamp is not that bhagwan needs a lamp he will be in darkness and therefore he will be distressed and he will be afraid therefore you have put the lamp there no you have put the lamp there as a symbol signifying the lamp of wisdom in your heart that is the purpose of the lamp the light therefore karma has uh, its own value but karma is absolutely useless when it comes to dispelling the darkness of ignorance so in fact shakespeare says there is only one darkness in this creation and that is the darkness of ignorance so a wonderful quotation so this quotation i have seen in uh, hyde park hyde park there is a shakespeare uh, statue underneath it is written so in that drama there is a character called malvalio and he is uh, he is uh, imprisoned in a dark room and a fool visits him hey malvalio how are you then malvalio says i am sitting in this dark place i am afraid of this darkness then fool says don't you worry because this darkness won't hurt you there is only one darkness that hurts people and that is the darkness of ignorance that is what the fool he is a fool you know the shakespeare's fool and kalidasa's vidushaka they are the most um, they are wisest people they are very wise people so anyway 
That is the verse. I am done with that verse. So you may say one time, Avirodhitaya karma Navityam vinivartayet Vidyavidyam nihantyeva Tejasti nirasanghavat You may give a little more sound to me. That makes me uh, a little more. Yeah, now, uh, now it is comfortable. Okay? Are you comfortable with this song? Okay. Next verse. I have avichin, avachinna, you have parichinna. What will you say? Let us say parichinna only. Because that is what you have before you. Parichinna ivadhyanat. Tannashe sati kevalaha. Svayam prakāśate yātmā Nekhāpāyen śumānivā This is a great verse. This is a very marvelous prakarana that is. Excellent prakarana, par excellence among all prakaranas. You see, ātmā. Now, what is ātmā? I must have said, but again I repeat, people think that the Atma is something glorious, which is Brahma. Suppose you start like that, which is true, There's nothing wrong in it. But in saying so, you have created a distance between yourself and the Atma. Right? Am I right? You should not do that. So then what happens? Atma I do not know now. Atma is, a, it is not anywhere near me. Only Ramana Maharshi knows it and Shankara knows it. I don't have anything to do with Atma as of now. I will get it. When? Certainly not in this life. And in some other life. You know why? Atma is so great. It is indeed Brahma. Therefore, we are very simple people. Ajnana people we are. We are Ajnanis. So this is how people love to put themselves in, in that ajnana. Because uh, without your knowing, uh, you find some sunes and some peculiar joy in your ignorance. Are you following? You know, people come to me. Uh, so they come. The Swamiji, uh, I want to see please come. So, not here, the other day I am saying. Uh, so I say, come to the class, Atma Vidya. Then they say, Swamiji, Darshan Kiriya. What Darshan, what Darshan you will do? You go to some meditation uh, of temple, don't come to me for Darshan. I refuse permission to for Darshan. Swamiji, uh, we, we come and want to have your Darshan. You go to your nearby temple, not to me. I am not an idol. I don't want to be converted into an idol. Uh, you come for the Atma Vidya. Then you know what they say, Swamiji, we are ignorant people, Ajnana is what we will know about Atma. Then you stay where you are. <laughs> what will you do with me and what will I do with you? So, this kind of a uh, clever innocence, it, it is not a clever, clever ignorance. You are ignorant and yet clever. And uh, you don't have any idea, you, you don't have any intention to get rid of it uh, immediately. Because uh, already it is declared that we are Ajnanis. So it is not correct. You are not Ajnani, you are a Jitnyasu. Okay? There is Ajnana. There is Ajnana. Now, you wake up early morning. You wake up. You are not darkness. You are aware of darkness. You are not darkness. There is darkness. And you can get rid of it by writing a lamp. Right? That is how it works. That is what the earlier verse says. You are sitting here. You are aware. You are aware of your surroundings. You are aware of your body, your mind. You are aware of everything. And also you are aware of your ignorance. Nothing wrong in it. You are ignorant. Do you know Atma? Atma is infinite. Do you know? No, I don't know. I am not aware. 
I don't know. There is ignorance, and you are aware of that ignorance. Therefore, Atma is not, you should not create a distance between yourself and Atma in the very first step. If you do that, then having done it, you study Vedanta for ten years, you will remain ignorant. And study Vedanta for another ten years, make it twenty years, you remain ignorant. People say, Swamiji, we are studying Vedanta for the last thirty years. Oh, very great. So the person is a backup boss even now. So, and he is studying Vedanta for thirty years. Swamiji, you know Chinmayananda ji? Uh, not much, a little I know. But I know Chinmayananda ji a lot. Very personally I know. Okay, having known Chinmayananda ji a lot, you must have got enlightened by now. No, no, no. Enlightenment you got. We know Chinmayananda ji. He came to our house also. <laughs> this is what people are. Uh, why it happens like that? It happens so much, so many times, again and again and again it is happening. Why? I am trying to pinpoint that. It happens like that because you have created a distance between you and the real self. No one here. You have already created a distance. And that is one reason. By saying that Atma is Brahma. It is as if Atma is something else and there is Brahma. So that is the one mistake you should not do. Whether Atma is Brahma or not, we will see that. Atma is yourself. So when I say Atma is yourself, from your side, how does it sound? I am. What is Atma now? I am. That is Atma. Okay? So take it like that. I am. Now, do you know Atma? Partly you know it, and yet you do not know it. That's why the question, who am I, becomes important. Suppose you know Atma, what is I am? All, all about I am, you know. Or you do not have any misconceptions about I am. You know I am correctly. Then uh, the question, who am I, is irrelevant. But suppose, you have many wrong notions about I am. You know that I am. I know that I am. But uh, who am I? What am I? I am not very clear. In fact, I make many mistakes. What is the mistake? Whatever is not I am, no? I am taking to be my I am. That is the self-identification. Therefore, I do not really know the true nature of I am. And because of that ignorance, I end up making the mistake of taking the non-self for the self. So this is a serious problem that you have to address. Therefore, Atma Vidya is the Vidya of I am. Now I ask a question to you. Is there anybody in this group who, who doesn't know, uh, who, who doesn't exist? I am means I exist, you know. Is there anybody here who doesn't exist? Is there anybody? Somebody got up, sir, I do not exist. No, oh, come on. You are wrong, you exist. It is like asking, is there anybody here who doesn't have a tongue in his mouth? Somebody got up and said, yes, sir, I don't have tongue in my mouth. No. Is he having tongue in his mouth or not? He has. Similarly, if somebody says, I do not exist, sir. Like, sir, I am not. I am not. Is there anybody who claims? I am not. That claim is a wrong claim. Because even to claim I am not, I should be. Therefore, I am is an unequivocal truth. Okay? There is no equivocal, equivocation or whatever as far as I am is concerned. God is, we don't know. Let us wait, we don't know. Did you meet God any time? No, no, right? So, you heard about God, you have not met God. Did you meet Chaturbhuja Vishnu and all that? We did not meet. Therefore, He could be there in Vaikuntha, we don't know. But, did you meet yourself? 
Yes. Anyway, my point is very simple. Ayam is an unequivocal, incontrovertible truth. That is what Ayam is. Is there any doubt about Ayam? Like, am I or am I not? Is there any doubt like that? No. Therefore, as far as Ayam is concerned, Vipaliyaya, namely I am not, doesn't exist. Samshaya, am I or am I not, also doesn't exist. Therefore, I am is an incontrovertible truth. Okay? And that I am is Atma. Now you tell me, Atma is yourself, uh, Atma is not something away from you, Atma is not something Altogether unknown to you? No. Atma is yourself. Okay? Then, this I am, which is myself, I experience it as limited. Parichinna Iva. Parichinna means limited. This I amness, I call it I amness. I amness is your inner being, it is. Your inner self. It is yourself. First I am comes, then everything else comes. You are sleeping. The particular sense of I am is not there. I am as an individual is not there when you are sleeping. Now you come awake. You become awake. Which comes first? I am or Jagat? I am comes first. Jagat comes later. You know the sequence? You examine all this. From today onwards, you become a, a, a student of Aya. That is Atma Bodha. You become a student of Aya. You explore Aya. It is like exploring an ocean. You can explore the rest of your life. Never ever underestimate the glory of Aya. No, no, what about God? Don't worry about God. You explore I am. You know why? Tatvamasi. You are the God that you are seeking outside of you. So stop seeking God outside of you. Learn to seek God in you, within you. How? Explore I am. Let us explore, let us start. So I am. Okay? I am is the innermost experience it is. Anubhuti. Now, I am, this I am, is it a statement, a sentence, or is it a thought, or is it something deeper than a sentence and a thought? You tell me. It is deeper. You tell me, you wake up. Then I am. And a few thoughts. Thoughts also rushing. Which is first? I am or thought? I am. Are you following that? And then you wake up. Then you become conscious of the body. Even as you are becoming conscious of the body, you instantly identify with it. There is not even any gap that you can recognize. You are conscious of the body and as though you are, you are identifying with the body at the same instant. Okay. But you tell me, which is first, I am or body identification? I am. Then you wake up, I am. And then you pray to God, Ishvara. Which is first, I am or Ishvara? I am. Come on. This I am is something supreme, superior. Because it is there first, even before the body is there. Even before the mind is there. Mind is thought. Even before the jagat is there, even before the God is there. What else is left? Everything is covered now. Nothing else is left. Therefore, first I am. First and foremost, I am. Then the body, along with the body comes the jagat. And then you look around the jagat and say, some God must have created it. Then comes the God. That is the sequence. Now I will tell you, 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 you put it on your, you put it in your heart, 
Ayam is prior to, prior, 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 ayo, or. It is a statement of meditation. This is some of the statements that are being made as part of this discourse. They can become um, meditation, uh, meditation uh, quotations or meditation messages. Just to take that statement and meditate. Like, I am is prior to body. I am. You need not say is. Already air is there, you know. I am prior to body. I am prior to the mind. Mind is thought. I am prior to the mind. I am prior to this creation, this world, Jagat. I am prior to God. Don't bother about God. Leave that alone. Just to show the glory of I am, I introduce to God also. You can stay with body, world and mind. I am prior to all these things. Now, by now you must have already grasped the glory of I am. It looked as if I am a useless person. So, uh, this is, a, people think that this is bhakti. What is that? Oh Deva, I am fit for nothing guy. What kind of bhakti it is? In Telugu, it sounds a bit odd also. Oh Deva, Nenu Pata Kundanu. We have an old part. I will sit that in your way. <laughs> so, that, that is not bhakti. Is that bhakti? That is not bhakti. A very crude form of bhakti, if you have to call it bhakti. Very crude form. Okay, you are a sinner. There is some other way you complain. If you are a sinner, keep quiet and don't complain anymore. So, that is that. Understand the, the glory of Ayah. Okay, one one point I have put in place. Now I want to explore this I am further. You examine it, you have to explore it. The teaching is nothing more than a pointing finger. You see, the Jan Master says the the finger points to the moon. And if anybody who believes that the finger is the moon will never know the moon. You will remain ignorant of the moon forever. <laughs> you think the finger is the moon. The finger is not the moon, Papa. The finger is not the moon. It is the pointing finger. The teaching is like that. So, you explore Aya. You become a, a devotee of Aya. That is what it is. You become a devotee of Aya. And explore it. That is meditation. Just to sit and to stay with I am. That is meditation. You believe me, really. So, I ask you, I am sitting in Toronto. I am. Toronto. In Toronto. Then I was in New York before coming here. I am. Then I was in Hyderabad before coming here. Before coming to New York. I am. Now you tell me, is there any difference in the in the alarmness? You cannot say what it is. The alarmness, how do you describe it? It is not a thought, it is not an object, it is not a thing, it is you. So what else will you say? That's why we are we are very clever fellows. What we have done, huh? we put a nest to that. I am ness. Now you know what it is. It is not a thing, it is not an object, it is not a thought, it is what it is. I am ness. Okay? Now, you tell me the I am ness which I experienced very deeply within. And I am ness is something which you yourself are. And therefore, the I am ness which I am myself in Hyderabad and in New York, and in Toronto, is it the same or is it different? You tell me. 
did the same. It is the same. That is an amazing discovery. You see, you are now sitting there in the cellar of Ananda Bhava. Right? I am in the cellar of Ananda Bhava. When you look around and uh, look at yourself, I am in the cellar. But you close the eyes and just be as non-verbal, pure I am. And see what will happen to Ananda Bhava. What will happen? It drops off. It will vanishes. So, you see, I will tell you, in, in chemistry or in science, uh, how, they, how they deal with parameters. They are called parameters. Space is a parameter, time is a parameter. Let me take the chemistry parameter, temperature. There is a reaction, A plus B giving C. A plus B come together giving C. That is the reaction. And this reaction takes one hour for completion at 45 degrees centigrade. Okay? And this reaction takes, it is, it is performed at 100 degrees centigrade and it takes one hour. What is the conclusion you draw? The conclusion is, the reaction is independent of temperature. Got the point? Because if temperature has an effect on the reaction, then as the temperature varies, the reaction's nature should vary. The nature of reaction should vary. Either it becomes fast or it becomes slow, whatever. This is how the parameters are studied. Now, I am applying the same principle to this deep inner being of myself. I am applying the same principle. The principle is whether uh, I find myself in Hyderabad or New York or Toronto, the alarmness is just the same. Which proves that the alarmness is independent of space. It is not limited by space. But then how come I feel that I am limited by space? You know how, how you feel that way? You open your eyes and look around, take yourself to be the body and therefore you feel that you are limited in space. That is how you are feeling you are limited in space. So, but that is Ajnana. Who asked you to identify with the body? Body is known to you, right? Body is known to you. Whatever is known to you is neither you nor yours. Suppose you open uh, the safe, that Almayra cabinet, and you find uh, a bundle of hundred dollar notes, and it is known to you. Therefore, it is not you, and it is not yours. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine that it is yours. That is our misfortune. That makes us suffer to no end. Really? I open this, I open the Almeida and find a bundle of hundred rupee notes. I look at it, pick up a few and use it. And the rest I will keep there. If I have to give to somebody else, I will pick up and give to him also. The rest I will keep there. Not even one time I think it is mine. Ah, what a freedom it is. Even a king doesn't have that freedom. You make a the very fundamental mistake, the, prime, uh, the most fundamental mistake of identifying with whatever you come across. This is what a samsari is. A samsari identifies with whatever that comes across. You are not supposed to identify like that. Then the body, you see, you pay attention to the body. When you donate bread, as you look at it, some of the blood sitting here, some 300 ml of the blood is now in a pouch. Now that blood in the pouch, is it you? It is not you, but you may say it is mine. No, no it is not mine. It is somebody else. It is, it is not, it is blood bags, not yours. 
And then uh, the body is such a thing, uh, if uh, some part is uh, not working properly, they manufacture the parts outside and put there. Really? A stent. This is stent is a stunt. <laughs> that is what a BS is. <laughs> so you put a stent. Will it make a, a, an important change in the general welfare of the individual? No. Will it make some change in the flow of blood? Yes. How long? For a while. Will it make important change in the general welfare of the person? No. Then why should we have a stand? Don't have it. If that is the way you have to decide, you decide like that. I don't know. I am not, I am not uh, fully, uh, fully qualified to make a judgment about it. But anyway, you can push it straight inside the body. The stand which is sitting on the table now is inside the body. A, 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 a physical uh, a knee cap made of steel is put inside and it becomes you. So, anyway, this is a long story. You have to understand this, I said any number of times. You are not the body due to ignorance. Now, when this ignorance is started, from the childhood it is coming. How do you know that you are the body? Parents have told us that you are the body. Why they should convey such an ignorance? Because they are ignorant themselves. This is what is called Andha Parampara. <laughs> so parents are ignorant. They believe that they are the body. They tell their children that you are the body. And they don't say you are the body. They create a value system around the child that the child identifies readily with the body. That is how they do. And that's why uh, they are ignorant. Why they are ignorant? Their parents are ignorant. Why they are ignorant? Their parents are ignorant. You can say that they are. You began this life with an ignorance of identifying with the physical body. Why? Because in the earlier life you were ignorant. Therefore you are ignorant this life. You can talk like that. Therefore, you, this, is a, a, this is a kanundram in Vedanta, a vishama ghatta. You know, kanundram, it is a very tough thing it is. You have to deal with it. Uh, there is no escape. I cannot dodge it anymore. You know, dodging, I cannot do. I have to settle it. There, otherwise, I cannot progress. What is this avidya? Avidya, avidya, ignorance, or the science we talk about. What is it? So, to begin, uh, let us begin with it. Number one, to identify with the physical body. That is avidya. Then you may wonder, is it possible not to identify with the physical body? You may wonder. You should wonder. Because we start the journey from where we are. So, my answer is yes. It is possible. It is possible for Mahatmas like Rana Maharshi and Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. That is obviously proved. But is it possible for you and me? Yes, it is possible. In fact, live alone Atma Vidya and Moksha to lead a, a sane life. You need to disidentify with the body. You know this, when you are uh, obsessively attached to the body, that is called identification, obsessive attachment to the body and its welfare, makes you suffer to no end. You know this, this uh, they perform surgeries and uh, they clinically follow the patient. So, uh, many surgeons in India, they tell me, when uh, they perform a surgery on a patient, uh, Say nephric tummy, some such surgery. I, I interacted with a nephrologist, a surgeon. So whenever he performs that nephric tummy, means he removes one of the kidneys, which is uh, spoiled. And so the patient, the, there are multiple patients of a similar age group, middle age, under similar body condition. All other factors are more or less the same. Only this is the parameter. What? 
He is that guy who is too much afraid because he is obsessed with the samsara and with his welfare of the body. And he is another guy who has some vaigakya. He may not be able to articulate so much, but somehow he knows, he has an inkling of the reality, namely, this body was born and it will die. I take it in my stride. Like that, a little wisdom means a little gap with reference to the body. I am, this is the body. I am, this is the body. That space, here some space. Now both undergo the same surgical procedure. One recovers very quickly, the other may recover in a prolonged fashion or he may not even recover and he may die of it. All determined by the obsession with the welfare of the body. Obsession. Many Hollywood heroines have committed suicide because they are obsessed with their looks. And the looks change by the day. So, therefore, they are obsessed with the looks and therefore they committed suicide. Obsessed. Therefore, leave alone Atma Vidya or Moksha, even for a sane and intelligent life. In the young age and middle age, these factors do not make a big difference because tangible difference they won't make. Because uh, you have a tremendous energy of life. Whereas when the energy of life starts declining and you are into the old age, the, the uh, dawn of old age, the beginning of old age, and then as you progress deeper into the old age, this factor determines the, the comfort zone of your existence. This determines the comfort zone. Really, those old people, everybody is going to become old, so those old people who have some space with reference to the body suffer that much less than compared with the people who are obsessively worried about the welfare of the body. That's why when you are performing a ritual, say, for long life, uh, nothing wrong in the ritual. You offer some oblations in the fire, which is always a good thing to do. But the attitude behind that ritual will make you suffer. Because that attitude has its origin in sheer ignorance of badly identifying with the physical body. Anyway, I will come back to this point now. As you identify with the physical body in your ignorance, now you become limited as though in space, because the body is limited in space. How do you say I am in Toronto? You explore it. You say I am in Toronto. How, how do you say that? Because you know it. How do you know? How do you know? You know, how do you know? I tell you how. I, I open the eyes, look around. Even as I look around, I take myself to be the body and say I am in Toronto. You follow the point? A Mahatma came. Somebody asked him, Sir, where from are you coming? So, when a Mahatma comes, you have to offer a cup of nice coffee or something. Where from he comes, what does it matter? The Mahatmas come from different places. They go to their vagabonds going around all places. Anyway, he said, I am coming from Moscow. Really? It happened. <laughs> the question was that uh, we can take away back. Because uh, sitting in a village is uh, coming from Moscow. The question was that we can take away back. So, some satsang was going on. In the meanwhile, some elder person arrived. Uh, some 15 minutes late, suddenly he noticed that the Mahatma he came. Did Namaskar Ma, how are you? Mahatma ji, kaha te aga hai hai? Where from New York are He said, I am coming from New York. <laughs> that is what he said. Then uh, the ten people, they could not uh, take it anymore. <laughs> One time they kept quiet. <laughs> this is repeated like this. They could not take it anymore. And then, Mahatma Ji, that means explain to us, what is this answer you are giving? Uh, you say one time mask for other time here. You seem to have come to a rickshaw. <laughs> so, 
What, what is this uh, then he said, a wrong question will get a wrong answer only. Oh my God, wrong question? Yeah. I am the spaceless. I am this. I am. Space is not an integral to me. Therefore, I don't come, I don't go. Now, what does it mean? We will see later. You see, when I am, is dependent upon space, then I am moves in space from point A to point B. That experiment I told you. Performed at 45 degrees and performed at 100 degrees at the same rate it goes. Means what? Everybody has no effect upon it. I am spaceless. I am has no space as a, as a, as a parameter. I am spaceless. When I am spaceless, how can you say I am coming from this place or I am coming from that place? Whenever you say I am coming from this place or I am coming from that place or I am in this place or in that place, you are making a mistake about I am. You have to take it in the right spirit. Suppose in the immigration they ask, where is nobody coming today? He asks the question. I, this question is one thing I did not understand. Because, he, he looks at the voting pass and in, the, in that uh, USA, that um, bridge is there while yeah. coming to Canada. He asks, where from are you coming today? Where from are you coming? You tell? You tell? I am not coming from Canada because I am a voter in Canada. And so where else I am coming from? I am coming from US. No, no. You have, he has to ask that question, you have to say. So I say, you know, I am a very clever guy. You know what I say? I am coming from Pennsylvania, I say. I don't commit. Pennsylvania. He, he, he understands. I mean, this guy is very clever guy, so he understands. Okay, what is it that you are carrying today? Any, any tobacco? No. So like that, uh, you know, without the committing anything, I will enter it too. Uh, so, you see, you can say that I am coming from here, I am coming from That is not the point. The point is, uh, you check, you look within and see whether you are taking yourself to be limited by space. You know, some people, they cannot sleep except in their bed. They cannot sleep. You go to a new place, you don't get sleep. Now, therefore, the place is affecting you. Affecting what? Mind or I am? Mind. Mind. So, know that. I am is not limited by space. You see, the sense of space is there only when you open the eyes, look around and I, by identifying simultaneously with the body, then only the sense of space and hence the sense of space limitation is there. That is there because of the jnana of identifying with the body. So, parichyana eva ajnana. You see, why not say Parichyanaha jnana, because of ignorance is limited, he is limited because of ignorance. You know why? Why he puts Eva? I will tell you a rule. Jo ajnana se hota hai, wo asal me nahi hota hai. You got the point? Whatever happens due to ignorance, it does not really happen. There is a, a serpent happened due to ignorance. The serpent doesn't happen really. Doesn't happen. So, uh, that, that is what ignorance is. So, therefore, you should not say, I am limited. Why? Because I have ignorance. <laughs> you are wrong. You appear to be limited because of ignorance. Therefore, he could say, Iva. Parichyana Iva Atnana. What? What? Atma. Atma. Means yourself. Means I am. Therefore, you experience this I am as though limited in space because of ignorance. I have to cover the space path, therefore I have covered. But uh, more important than space is time. 
you feel that you are limited in time. Limited in time means what? What is the limitation in time? You feel that you you know you not feel. You know that you were born. You know. Now this is the time. This verse offers us an opportunity to examine what we call I know. You say I know. I know. You say that I know. What is that I know? Is it valid or invalid? You have to examine. You say I know. I was born. Now, is it valid? It is not valid because. You do not know that you are born. Unless you take hearsay to be knowledge, can you take hearsay to be knowledge? Hearsay should not be taken as knowledge, unless you have direct understanding or direct experience of the blessed thing. It cannot be called knowledge. Hearsay cannot be knowledge. Now you see, this atma vidya is the examination of. The very fundamental things of for human existence. Suppose you are studying. I am giving you an example. Suppose you are studying Newton's laws. Newton's laws. So when two bodies when a body two bodies collide, impact is determined by mass into velocity into something. Okay. So when you study Newton's laws, we don't ask the fundamental questions like what. What is mass? We don't ask. We assume that we know mass. What is velocity? We don't ask. Newton's law begins as when two bodies are moving in space and time, absolute space and absolute time. Like that they begin. Now I ask the three questions. You before you go into Newton's laws anymore, you answer these questions. What? What is mass? What is the space and what is time? Then the physics teacher, you know what will he say? The first sitter. This is not the time to ask those questions. To study the laws. That is how we study the laws in tenth class. When we in high school, when we study the laws, we study them uh, without asking these three basic questions. And now you finish college. And go to university. Now you are doing M.S. Physics in Princeton. Let us say. Then uh, you ask these questions: What is mass? And uh, they, they have recently discovered a particle called boson. That the discovery of that particle, the search for that particle began with this question: What is mass? Einstein raised this question, 1940, and until not what it, until O5, he raised this question. From then on, they are searching for an answer. Now they seem to be uh, getting some answer. What is mass? What is space? What is time? So these are the very weighty fundamental questions which you don't ask normally. But Atma Vidya is like asking such questions: What is mass? What is space? What is time? You tell. Such very fundamental questions are being asked in advanced physics. This is like that. Therefore, you should ask the basic, very fundamental questions: Who am I? Obviously, the answer is you know. Who are you? I ask. The answer that you should give is, I am. Stop there. Don't go any further. Say that. No, no. I am asking you, who are you? Then you can elaborate as, I am what I am. You can say that. You know that. <laughs> This is coming from Old Testament. Yeah. So Joshua or somebody asks Moses, and Moses asks. The bush is on fire. Moses asks, "Who are you?" I am. Means what? I am what I am. 
That is the answer. So now it is up to Moses to find out what is the meaning of that. The bush is on fire. That fire is the fire of knowledge. Anyway, so I ask you, who are you? I am. Don't say any further. Suppose you say, I am a Canadian. Suppose you say, no, no, Canadian is okay. Suppose you say, I am a Vaishya, a caste, a caste label, Vaishya. Now, in that I am a Vaishya, in that statement, what you know is I am. That you know. It is an incontrovertible truth. But uh, the Vaishya part that you added to what you know is not knowledge. What is that? It is hearsay. No, no, hearsay means I did not hear it on the road. My parents told it. Mm, that is how it is. Whatever the parents tell, you have to unlearn all that. And uh, you have to unlearn the fact that you were not, that you were born also. Anyway, I, I am making a deal of it because I want to uh, impress upon you the significance of these fundamental weighty questions. You have to explore. So, uh, now I am. Uh, so you say, I was born. I ask, how do you know? No, I know. You don't know. So whatever you don't know, you, you put it aside. You don't claim. How do you know? You see, in this regard, I will make a statement. You take it with an open mind. As long as you believe that you were born to a set of parents at a given place and time, so long you will remain ignorant of your true self. You got it? Or should I have to repeat the entire sentence again? You got it. So, I am not suggesting uh, that you need not obey your parents and all that. That is not the point. Pay, you pay respects to your parents and do some service to them. All that is incidental. You have to do it anyway. But that is not the point. We are looking at the Atma. This uh, examination you have to do, your parents also should do it. And you should guide the parents also. There is a thing called Pita Putra Samvada. Putra uh, teaches the Pita. No harm. Nothing wrong in it. Therefore, I am asking you, are you limited in time? Yes. How? How are you limited in time? Because I was born. How do you know? You don't know. Don't say I was born. You were not born. You were never born. No, no, no. And the body was born. Okay. The body was born. You were not born. You see, uh, the body was the body was born. Well, what does it mean? And before birth, the body did not uh, was not there. It was there. Then, if it was there, then why do you say it was born? Therefore, the blessed thing body also, you cannot say it was born. Suppose, this I take from here and put here. The cup was born. That, that is what you are talking. The cup was not born. Cup. What was born now? Nothing was born, right? Nothing was born. This is kind of Jyatavada. In my land. I will not exaggerate it. This is the Jyatavada. There is no birth. What was born? Even the body was not born. Leave alone you. Were you not there before your birth? Were you not there? You say I was there. Or simply say I don't know. So leave it alone. Therefore, so let us, you cannot claim that you were born. Be open, be open, and say only that which you know. Don't say anything that you do not know. Don't presume. Don't be presumptuous. You know presumptuous? 
He said, hey, one gentleman was there, he was talking with me on telephone. So I have advised him, sir, you are very presumptuous. He became angry. What you are talking? I am not talking anything. I am suggesting uh, that you are presumptuous. No, no, I am not presumptuous. Okay, have a good day. <laughs> so what else I can do? So, I am suggesting, don't be presumptuous. Don't presume anything like that. So don't be presumptuous. You know presumptuous? Yeah. Don't presume anything. You have no right to be presumptuous. You tell me what you know. You tell me only that much which you know. Okay, you take it. I am. Uh, that is all you can tell. What you are and how you are is entirely due to your ignorance. You say, I am a Vaishya. Ignorance. You say, I am unhappy, I am unlucky. How you are? Ignorance. Don't you ever talk anything about what you are and how you are, because you don't know. Be honest, be sincere, and say whatever you can say about yourself. Come on, come on, you say, you can only say, I am. You cannot say I was born. You should not. Uh, you presume a few things and say, now, I am going to die. You are not going to die. Who told you you are not going to die? No, no, body is going to die. Body is going to die. This table is going to die. Table doesn't die. Why? Because it never lived. It has to live to die, you know. The table doesn't die because it never lived. The body doesn't die. You know why? Because it never lived. The life lives. Body doesn't live. Body doesn't know, body doesn't live. It is like electricity versus fan. The fan doesn't rotate. It seems to rotate. It doesn't rotate. Is it a self auto auto rotatory? No. Therefore, the body is not going to die because it never lived. I am not going to die because I was never born. This is the truth, very obvious truth, as clear as daylight, but our conditioning, I am saying it with a lot of sadness, our conditioning is so deep. What kind of conditioning? Familial, social, religious, and cultural conditioning. The, the family conditioning is so deep, the religious and the cultural conditioning is so deep that you believe that you were born and you are going to die. Then you come to Vedanta, which says that you were never born and you are not going to die, but you hear it, but you take it in your stride, never, never examine it, never accept it, never examine it, never explore it, just listen to it. Because that is what is expected in the Vedanta class, therefore the teacher has, is expected to say, Ajo Nityaha, Shashpato Yam Purana, never born, timeless. So he is supposed to say those things, therefore he say, we are supposed to listen to whatever he says, therefore we are listening. He goes back to his birth and death story and you go back to your birth and death story. This is how we are studying Vedanta all these years. Am I right? Or am I wrong? I am supposed to say, teaching Gita, Ajo Nitya Shashkuto in Purana, Nagayate Nahanyate Hanyamane Shedive. That is what I am supposed to say. Before I say that, and you are supposed to listen to it because you are very Devoted as students. What is devotion? Not head for everything. What is devotion? Like that proverbial bull, old bull. It cannot carry any loads. The person puts a, a nice carpet on its shoulders and then carries it around. It just walks 
car in the heavy weight box because it is old now and he carries it around. It does only one job, it walks around with him. And then whenever he asks a question, it knocks its head. This is the, and the bull has a name. The name is Basava. That is the name of the religious name. Basava. And therefore we are all Basavas <laughs> going around and nodding the head, never understanding anything, never even making a proper attempt to understand. Now, I ask you a question. You want to know that you are birthless and deathless or not? If you want to know that you are birthless and deathless, you want to examine it, you want to explore it, you want to know how, how come it is so, then you are a student of Atma Vidya, you come to Atma Vidya class. Be honest. Be honest with yourself. If you believe, if you are sure that you are born and you are going to die, don't come to Atma Vidya class. It is not for you. Go and perform some ritual for whatever reason. Either to prolong the lifespan or to go to heaven after death. Because when you are certain that you are going to die, the wisdom lies in doing one of those two things. Either you prolong the life or you plan to go to heaven or both. That is what you have to do. Instead of doing that, you come and sit in the Atma with your class. What, do you, what, what are you expecting from here? From the Shankaracharya, what is it that 